and they, I mean, and, and, they're, and they're butlers, and I mean, they get on trams that take them up and down, there. and they're beautiful lakes, and right in the redwoods, and huge firms, and I mean, it is the most, one of the most beautiful places on, on Earth. And they have every day at lunch, they have a speaker, and one day it's, gonna, it's Henry Kissinger, uh, the next day it's George Bush, They're, they tend toward the conservative up there. <laughs> and, uh, but it's an extraordinary place, and he was feeling a little cabin fever, a little housebound, and the other day he said, I'm going up to the Grove, Ed. <laughs> no shit, Pop. <laughs> uh, and, you know, so he's up there now. Um, as my dear Saint Anne Carmen used to say about both he and I, he's afflicted by severe mischievousity. <laughs> Next one. Did I leave any family members out? No, no nobody you know. Um, it's everybody's in really good shape, um, and it's and it's uh, we're so blessed. Um, you know, I mean, it's uh, it was sad for us that my mom went younger than we would have wanted her to. She's been gone about 14 years now. Um, and she really was the kind of heart and soul of the Ghostbusters. But in a sense, it's been very interesting because certainly my dad and I, oh, my sister, I didn't know about my sister. Um, my dad and I have grown much, much, much closer since she passed on. And we have become best friends. We talk on the phone at least once a day, sometimes two or three times a day. And I see him at least two or three times a week. Um, and I'm praying that so far that seems to have got out of the next, my next generation, which I'm real happy because, because I said, time does call and come home with the drop of a hat. Um, and keeps telling us how grateful she, she is that the, she had our, us as parents, which is a really nice thing to hear. Um, the cool thing is that all her friends, kind of, we become parents to all our friends, and if there's like a pregnancy type problem, are is latex or polypropylene better for condoms? <laughs> and, and I'm sitting there going, <laughs> and being so proud that they would call her, her girlfriend or her boyfriend would call to ask me that I want to come up with the right answer. I'm like, well, in my experience. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm, after I drink, I get really bad headaches. I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember when I used to drink a lot. Yeah, uh, well, you know what it is? It's a blood sugar thing, I bet you. You should have a glucose tolerance test. And the girl found out she was very, she had like low blood sugar. And the alcohol, which is pure car carbohydrate, shoots your blood sugar up and you feel terrific for about 20 minutes and then it plummets way below the norm. Um, so instead of telling her not to drink, I said, full stomach. <laughs> Complex carbohydrates, you know, and, 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 and try to keep it to a drink, you know, a shot every half hour, hour maybe. Um, and they're all very cool. They're not druggies or, you know, uh, drugs at all, which is uh, considering what a lot, of what you see across the nation is, is a great relief to pop up. Did I say hi over there? Yeah.
Well, that considering the character, that was nice. <laughs> well, you know, the thing is, there, basically, one of the, Betty Davis said something to me um, when at one point talking about acting, and I was again, I was very lucky to grow up in a sort of bridging both Hollywoods. Um, I grew up with, well, in, with people in the living room like uh, Capra and, and uh, Cooper and Stewart and. Um, Carol Lombard was my mom's best friend, and my dad used to sail with uh, Flynn and uh, Fairbanks and uh, down to Baja, and uh, William Wyler and uh, Louis Milestone, great directors and actors and everything. And they were considerable people. I mean, as to this book, Isaac Newton, I think it was, you know, we, we see so far because we stand on the shoulders of giants. I mean, these people were <coughs> amazing, especially to a little kid. Um, and so I was actually lucky enough um, to really sort of be around some of that. Um, and I remember, and I got a lot of advice from a lot of people uh, in, in, on virtually every topic you can imagine. <laughs> uh, and, and one of the things that I, I clearly remember Betty Davis saying, and she was certainly older at that point, um, was advising me to, to start to do character parts early as an actor. Um, that it would be, uh, aside from being much more fun, um, give me a much longer career, and it, and it has proven to be true in a sense. Um, and very quickly, and actually, in a way, it was sort of horrified my agents, because with the first few films as successful as they were, my breakthrough in the business, um, the agents wanted me to keep repeating that. And that's sort of what tends to drive a creative artist to drink, or driving into a telephone pole, or, you know, death by mayhem, or... Um, whereas, with a hero, you have to kind of, with a good guy, you've got to kind of walk the, the middle of the road. You know, you can't really be too creative in your choices. Um, you can be interesting, hopefully, but not, 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 you can't really chew the scenery like you can when you're a good character or a bad guy, you know. And in this case, this character, uh, so I've tried to play about 50-50 over my career. 50% bad guys, 50% good guys. And I consider bad guy for me kind of a character role. <laughs> Um, but it's it's always interesting because a bad guy, anything you can think of that you can bring off, you can do. Um, which makes it much more interesting as an actor to be able to kind of do things, you know, that, oh, I can do that, yeah, that would be very cool. Now, in this case, the Nash Bridges, sort of difficult because I really only had one scene. You know, there are a couple of little spots here and there, but it's really Cheech's and, and Don's show, you know. And I kind of had one scene, and that scene in itself sort of demanded me to be something which is rather difficult for this Latino, half-Latino guy, which is to be understated and restrained. <laughs> and so it wasn't a kind of a normal character role, but it was. I mean, it was a bad guy, obviously a bad guy. Um, and in a kind of a strange script, the logic was a little stretched, a little thin with the twins, and, well, but he was this guy, and they happened, this happened that their friend was the twin of the guy that the guy murdered 20 years ago, that, I mean, it was one of those, you know, and you just kind of sort of blow through it and hope that everything works out okay. Um, it was a it was a neat experience, um, which is how I kind of judge uh, the value and the success of the job by the experience itself and the people and the friendships. Um, and uh, I actually off that did a martial law where I played a good guy, um, and uh, I had I think uh, a couple of scenes in the martial law, a couple two two or three scenes in the martial law, and a couple of them are pretty good. In the Nash Bridges, there was really only that one scene. Um, well, where was your mind? Where, where was, what were you thinking of? He's so... I can't hear filming, aren't you? I can't say that. Evil. That'll work. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing is that evil people don't think they're evil. So really, again, going back to an old Indian teaching, in nature there is no good and bad. There just is what is. There just is truth. That snake eating a rabbit on the trail is not a bad snake. He's being the best possible snake he can be. <laughs> and that's kind of what I was doing. I was being the best possible, possible snake, snake I could be. Um, and, and, I mean, nothing is scarier than a bad guy um, who doesn't consider himself a bad guy. Oh, yeah, just since they're grand. You know, I mean... And really is, you know, sort of, well, he feels a little superior to the people around him, um, uh, justified in, in what he was doing for various reasons. It kind of boils down to finding out ways of justifying his behavior. 